pleasure being here with you today to be able to share with you what I refer to as the new biology. There's really, there's really nothing new about it. It's actually old biology. It's probably just the resurrection of the old biology that we now refer to as the new biology because it dates back thousands and thousands of years ago. I mentioned to you Moses uh, as the first morphologist and hematologist. Uh, he talked about blood, didn't he? So, uh, and, and I don't know if he was trained at the universities, if he had an MD behind his name, but he surely knew something about blood, didn't he? He made a very profound statement. For the life and death is the blood. It is the single most important organ. And it is an organ, by the way. And I say that uh, because I want you to understand it as a living, flowing organ. No different than your bones or your muscles or your brain or your skin. This organ is unique to you and it is individual. It is actually like one of those computers, the blood is. It actually receives and records and documents every thought, every word, every deed that you've ever experienced in your lifetime. And there is science right now working on taking one drop of blood and being able to put it on a recorder so you can have your whole life's history. Not only hear it, but see it too as well. So nothing has ever lost. When we're talking about the blood, the blood will become the new computer chip. And it will be uniquely individual to you. And that's why I always caution people to think twice before they have a blood transfusion. Because a blood transfusion is unique to that particular individual. And it's why they say in the Bible not to drink the blood of animals because you're taking on their identity, their intelligence, and their experience. And for those who dream know exactly what I'm talking about especially after they've eaten rabbit and they're somehow hopping through the field <laughs> going why am I here in this field <laughs> and, and this may sound funny to you and it is but it's so funny true when you eat the blood or the flesh of another living being, you take on their information, their intelligence. Now, wouldn't it be nice if there was a means by which we could take one drop of blood, your blood, and we could put it under a high-powered microscope, and from that one drop of blood, it would tell you everything both from the past and the current situation which would give us a clear view of the future. Not that it would predict the future, because that is totally up to you and how you decide to choose. It's kind of like when you see the blood, it would be like the Cheshire cat in Alice in Wonderland. Do you remember that, where Alice came up to a road, end of the road, and there was a right way to go and a left way to go? And who appeared but the Cheshire cat? And Alice said to the Cheshire cat, I don't know which way to go. And what did the Cheshire cat say? Well, if you don't know where you're going, any road will do. And unfortunately, this is the way a lot of us live our lives. We come to the crossroads of life, and we don't know whether to turn to the right or to the left because we don't have enough knowledge or intelligence or information that can guide us and direct us. I have found that the blueprint of everything that we need to know is in the Bible. We just 
have to have the Spirit as we're reading it to be able to understand it. So when Moses said, life and death is not in the blood, life and death is the blood. And I make that very important distinction because there is a unique difference between in the blood and is the blood. So there is now a way in which you can take one drop of blood and have in front of your eyes instantaneously the understanding of your health and well-being on a physical, emotional, and spiritual level. One drop of blood under a microscope reveals everything about you without you revealing anything to the practitioner. You see what I found out that people lie, blood does not lie. It only knows one thing and that's the truth. Many times when I'm taking blood and I've taken over 500,000 samples from 40,000 people around the world and I don't profess to know everything about blood but I knew, do know this, the blood gives us information and with looking at blood drops which are blood prints we're able to understand things that a PET scan won't reveal, that an MRI will not reveal, that a mammogram will not reveal. Now that should be affordable and that should be available for all of us. Wouldn't you think that? And yet the government does not want you to know about this test. They don't want to make it available. They classify it as a high complexity test and actually make it impossible, even if you're a medical doctor, to be able to have this test done. Even though it's inexpensive, it's accurate, and it's immediate. And it actually fits the bill of this it'll tell you something years in advance before you actually experience it. So if you have something, let's say, running in your family, like you're eating a certain way, living a certain way, which then will lead to a symptomology of breast cancer, because breast cancer is not something you get, it's something that you do. Diabetes is not a disease that you contract, Diabetes is something that you do with your lifestyle and dietary choice. We can feel sorry for ourselves or for others saying, oh, that polar soul, they have breast cancer, prostate cancer, brain cancer, diabetes, multiple sclerosis. And yet these are the consequences of individual lifestyle and dietary choice. These are the symptoms, not the diseases, of an accumulation of going down a road and not understanding which way to turn. So today we have science spending billions of dollars around the world seeking for the cure for cancer and yet we already know what causes cancer and we also know what cures it. We have science telling us there is no cure for diabetes. In fact the president of the Diabetic Medical Association said I don't want to hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't tell me. I said, we've already got it figured out. We have insulin pumps now. We can regulate insulin, and it's doing just fine. We don't need a cure. And I said, what about your son who has diabetes? Well, we just put him on the insulin pump, and he's doing fine. And anyway, who would really make a decision to make a significant change in their lifestyle and diet that would reverse their particular condition? What you're asking, Dr. Young, for people to do is beyond their capacity. And I said to him, beyond their capacity? What, to avoid diabetic neuropathy? Beyond their ca capacity to lose their eyesight? He became very offended by my comments. You see, you know, sometimes the ego gets in a way. Shelley and I were in Las Vegas. 
They gave us the key to the city. We tried to use it, didn't work. <laughs> but we were there and we were invited by the local diabetic association. And I was sitting right next to the regional for the diabetic association. And he gave his lecture and I gave my lecture. And he leaned over to me and he said, Dr. Young, you are right on. That was a wonderful speech. But I have to tell you, I cannot support you because if I do, I will lose my job. Welcome to the land of the free, the home of the brave. This is what we're dealing with. You see, here in America, we don't need health insurance. We need health education. If people knew, or at least if they read the Bible, they'd ask, say, where do I get that manual on how to live my life and take care of my body and keep it clean? See, there is a manual that's already been written, but are we paying attention to it? So I've kind of expanded on what God has already taught it's already been written by his prophets of old and even latter-day prophets and now you know because of my curiosity I'm just verifying what God has already said what Moses has already said what Isaiah said remember what he said grass is flesh now that's interesting you mean Isaiah, you mean if I literally take that as what he said, you mean if I eat grass, that will turn to flesh? And I had to think about that for a very, very long time, and I realized that he was absolutely correct. When God told Isaiah that grass was flesh, and then when Jesus to the Essenes said, if you are seeking light and life, that all you have to do is ingest the humble grass in a discourse that Jesus when he was teaching the Essenes what is the best food that we can be eating to give us light and life the answer was grass well we now know the molecular structure of grass and we now know the path from grass to flesh and I'm going to share that with you in the lecture today and uh, I didn't know I was going to go on early, but that's okay. You're all here. I'm here. And uh, thank you for taking your time. I'd also encourage you to support uh, this family and this mission uh, because you've got a good thing here. And it's necessary. It's needed. America needs people like Danny. We need more people like that. It's out there teaching the truth, natural hygiene, both on a physical, temporal, and a spiritual level. Okay, I wanted to introduce two of my associates, uh, Don and Caroline. They're here with me today. Uh, the reason they're here today because they are qualified PH Miracle coaches. And I know there's not enough of us to help everyone but I know you're gonna have questions and we want to empower you with knowledge that is our mission to change and to save lives okay so they have the knowledge Danny's got the knowledge and we're he's empowering me I'm empowering him with new new things new thoughts and it's only for the greater good so they're gonna be in the back there if you have questions after my lecture. There they are. And they can, they can, they can help you with questions about uh, exercise, about the kind of exercise that we do, about lymphatic massage, about colon therapy, hydrotherapy, about IV therapy, about uh, emotional clearing, about, you know, why do I drink grass instead of smoke it? They can answer that one. Yeah, I said it's amazing what man can do and distort things. You can take something as beautiful as grass 
that will build blood that builds flesh and you'll start smoking it as if that's the way it's supposed to be used. So, uh, probably the most important thing that you can do or begin doing today is start building flesh with green foods and green drinks. If it's not green, then you need to read Genesis chapter 1 and go from, chap go from verse 29 and read the next verse, 30. Because 30 is the verse, correct me if I'm wrong, pull your Bibles out, would you? Okay, you got your Bibles out there. What color of food are we supposed to be eating? Okay, didn't say yellow, didn't say blue, didn't say pink, didn't say orange. Because people ask me, what about orange this, red that, blue this? No. The carrot tops are what we should be eating. The beet tops, it's not the red, it's not the root, it's the green. It's the green that builds flesh. Now I know that beets and carrots taste really sweet, and I'm the first to admit that I like a little sweet. Okay, but that's the color. Does it say green? Am I correct on that? Yeah. Is it verse 30? Yeah. Verse 30. So, um, uh, God has spoken as it pertains to the color of the foods. He talks about plant-based diet, and then he goes even to more detail and gives us the color of that plant-based diet. So that's why I drink greens. And... Uh, there's a lot of different ways to drink it. Now, I don't know if you're interested in my background or not at all, but the reason I share this is not to aggrandize myself, but, but I have been on a path that's unique. And that path is, I've been studying the effects of food on the blood. And, and so, keeping an open mind, I can tell you what foods are good for blood building and what foods are not. And I have to take my ego out of this, okay? Because I'm just following what the blood is going to tell me, and, and, and I trust the blood perfectly. So when I say things, I'm not just flippantly saying them. It's based upon 35 years of research of seeing people who are eating allergy, algaes or spirulina and or versus eating wheatgrass and barley grasses those things that grow above the ground, okay, rather than those things that ferment and break down dead bodies. There is a unique difference. And all food has some value to it, even food that's not good for us, like animal protein. You say, well, there must be some nutritional value there. So there's a reason that I've made a list, and that list is quite comprehensive in the new PH Miracle Revised and Updated book. So I can't tell you all the foods that are good for you and all the foods that are not good for you. So I've listed those in the book for you so you can refer to them. And I talked about some of those foods yesterday. My research has been on the effects of our lifestyle and dietary choices on the blood and then on the blood on the tissues. What I've determined then from this research is that there is only one sickness and one disease. There's many subsets of this one sickness and one disease, but they're just as allopathic medicine would describe, they are, sympt uh, they are symptoms, not diseases, of this one sickness and one disease, which is the over-acidification of the blood and tissues due to an inverted way of living, an inverted way of eating, thinking, or drinking. So what we eat, what we drink, what we think, so even our thoughts, affect and impact the quality of the blood. And any, anything that impacts the quality of the blood impacts the quality of your bones, your muscles, your liver, your heart, etc., etc. So do you see why I say the most important organ of the human body is the blood? But yet then I can reference that back to someone that's a lot more intelligent than I, a prophet or several prophets, and then who are they listening to? Now, after 35 years of research, I was trying to figure out how to explain this simply. Because if I can't explain it simply to you, then I probably don't understand what I'm talking about. 
So the two premises of my, or hypothesis of my research is this. The first one, that the human body is alkaline in its design. Kind of like a brand new car just off, just off the line. All body fluids that surround all cells that make up your tissues and organs are alkaline on the outside and alkaline on the inside. So that's point number one. Point number two is all function. What is a function? Breathing is a function. What is an acidic byproduct of breathing? Carbon dioxide. Uh, exercise is a function. What's an acidic byproduct of exercise? Lactic acid. Um, another byproduct of metabolism. This one will surprise you. When our body is using electrical potential or electrical energy, the byproduct or waste product is glucose. Okay? So anything is breaking down or fermenting or rotting, sugars increase. That's when mom would make me the banana nut bread. Not with green bananas, not with yellow bananas, but with these rotting high sugar bananas. She made great banana bread. I haven't had it for a long, long time. I've thought about it often. Yeah, but I've restrained myself. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'd probably be tempted to have one if she had <laughs> baked some for me. But I'll tell you what she did for me when I was a child. She would make me avocado sandwiches. Now that's really strange. You ever met a kid that liked avocados? Okay, well, and I never thought that I would be an avocado farmer either. But Shelley and I were born in Salt Lake City, went to school in Salt Lake City. We raised our children in Alpine, Utah, which is on the Rossatch Range of the Rocky Mountains. We had a beautiful spot there that God provided for us to raise our children in peace. And, uh, and yet this... Uh, we ended up in San Diego in Valley Center, which is northeast of San Diego, in a beautiful 45-acre ranch of avocados. Now, who planned that? <laughs> Shelley and I have to tell you this quick little story. I wish I had more time here, but these little stories, they, they, these are reflections. But I became very reflective today because of Danny's talk. Um, we were at a lecture in La Jolla, and some friends of ours said, you, you need to come see this place. It's incredible. He says, well, we're not looking for a house. We're very happy in Alpine, Utah. He says, you really need to see this place. It'd be per perfect for you. We went up and looked at it. And I said, yes, it's perfect. It's beautiful. It's like the Garden of Eden. It's that beautiful. I'll show you a picture later. I said, but we don't have the money. How could we ever afford to buy something like this? But there was this overwhelming urge for me to make an offer even though I didn't have the money. Have you ever had that? <laughs> and it wasn't because I wanted it, you know, like an acquisition, but it seemed like this was the best place for Shelley and I to be, to bring people from around the world who were looking for health and wellness. So we made an offer. The offer was rejected because it was less than what they were wanting. And they sold it to someone else. I thought, oh good. I'm relieved. It's not for us. Even though I felt it. But it kept coming up every day. I have this overwhelming feeling that we're going to be in San Diego. And we're going to acquire this. Even though it's been sold to someone else. And we don't have the money. Well, we went on a trip, Shelley and I were in Italy, traveling with our family, and I kept looking at the internet. Still pending, hadn't closed. And one day that pending sign was off, I called up, this was like months later, I called my agent, I said, the house is back on the market, and I'd like to make an offer. The realtor says, wait a minute, aren't you on a trip? So how do you know this? I've been on the internet. I've been following this on, on a daily basis, and I feel like we're going to acquire this. He says, well, what, if, what do you want to do? He says, call, call the realtor. He 
call the realtor, call back. You're right. It is for sale. What do you want to do? So make an offer, full price, and uh, tell him I need 60 days because I'm going to be over here for another week. And it would be impossible to get a jumbo loan that quick. And I just need time. Well, they accepted the offer with, with some, with some, some uh, clar uh, qualifications. One, that, thank you very much. For some reason, that sounded like Elvis. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I'm dating myself, aren't I? I'll say, where was I? Okay, with, quali with uh, some qualifications. One, the money deposit's non-refundable. And two, you're going to have to close in 30 days. I said, that only gives me three weeks because I've still got another week in Italy when I get home. You know, and we talked about it and went ahead with the offer, even knowing that we didn't have the money at that time. So we put down a six-figure deposit. We had three weeks to close on a multi-million dollar ranch and I had no money. But for some, some, God was impressing on my mind that all would be provided. When I got back from the trip, I got a call from my agent in New York, said, we want to see you back here. They're so impressed with what you've done, they want to enter into a contract. I flew back to New York, we signed a contract, I begged for mercy. <laughs> I said, I don't need my money later, I need it now. This is what we're doing. They went to a meeting and said, great. You know, we're going to help you because we believe in what you're doing. And without even knowing where the funds were going to come from, the heavens were opened and uh, the resources were provided. So we ended up closing on the property. And we've been there now for 12 years. When we, when we arrived on the property, we knelt down and dedicated the prayer, uh, in a prayer to all those who would come that need healing. And now the Rancho del Sol has become the PH Miracle Center where miracles from God happen. <laughs> anyway, all functions of the human body are acidifying to the blood and tissues. Breathing, even thinking, creates acids that can make you sick. If those acids are not properly eliminated, they get first from the blood, if you want to know where they go. If acids or toxins cannot be eliminated through the four channels of elimination, urination, perspiration, defecation, and respiration, they are then immediately transported into the connective tissue. What are some connective tissue disorders that are rampant now? Fibromyalgia. That's nothing more then urine that should have gone out through the urinary tract system is now getting parked into your connective tissue. Now I use the word urine because you all know what that is. But if you can imagine your blood purifying itself by pushing out waste products that should go out, from the, out through the bowels or through the urinary tract system, they get parked in the connective tissue. All irritation, inflammation, any contraction of the muscles, such as the new disease which is being promoted like the restless leg syndrome, just another disease to market another drug that does not work, is nothing more than I eat too much acidic food disease. My channels of elimination are blocked and therefore the body, specifically the blood, is purifying itself by parking that excess acidity into the connective tissue. And from the connective tissue, if it is not removed, it then goes into the fatty tissues. That's why obesity is a worldwide problem. All you have to look at, what causes obesity? Not fat, that is the lie. The truth of obesity is the body's inability to remove its own waste products and the body perfectly protecting itself by parking its acid in your hips, your thighs, your buttocks, your waistline, and in your breast and brain. And if you continue that process, those acids will break down the breast, causing breast cancer. But before the breast cancer, it's always mi mi microcalcifications. Stones in the gallbladder are nothing more than acids that should have been removed are being 
solidified in order to protect healthy tissue. So we find stones in the brain, we find stones in the thyroid, and we find it in just about every one we test using sonograms. We find cysts, we find stones everywhere. And why do people have all these stones? Because they're not properly eliminating their own waste products. Auto intoxication is very real. And these acids come from not only what we eat, but also what we think, and also through the mechanism of metabolism. Since our bodies are constantly on 24-7, we are constantly producing acidic waste products, and that's why it's literally and biologically and biochemically impossible to overalkalize. In fact, when the body is in a state of alkalosis, what is being measured is the blood pH as it's trying to overcompensate as it's pushing acids out into the tissues. So when our pH of our blood, which is balanced at 7.365 to 7.4, begins to rise to 7.4 to 7.45 to 7.5, what is happening? The blood is trying to overcompensate for acidity as it's pushing acids out into the tissues, and you're at a risk for cancer. Do you lower blood alkalinity? Absolutely not. By lowering blood alkalinity, by putting more acid in the body, sets the stage for even more acid that leads to more tissue acidosis that then leads to a cancerous condition. Unfortunately, oncologists, hematologists, and the complete medical community do not understand the pathology of stones. The pathology of these microcalcifications in the breast, the brain, prior to the, to the tumor formation, which is just a larger problem of acid spoiling more tissue. Now we've all been surgeons, we've all taken a banana and cut off the acidic portion of the banana. But just like a banana that rots or gets spots, we look at our own skin and we see spots here and there, that's nothing more than your own urine coming out through the skin rather than out through the urina urinary tract. If you stink, you're urinating through your skin. You don't need deodorants. What you need is purification from within. And that really comes down to probably the most single most important thing that you can do, which costs less than $10. And then you can fire your doctor. And then with this knowledge, you empower yourself with the knowledge and education to be able to care for your body. Because your body takes care of itself if you know how to do it. Since it's alkaline by design, you have to measure the pH of the fluids of the body. Very simply, you measure the pH of the urine. The urine is a measurement of pH of the interstitial fluids or the fluids from the cells, both from inside or intracellular fluids and the fluids on the outside as they're being dumped into the blood and then urinated through the urinary tract system. So if your pH is below 7.2, then you're in tissue acidosis and you're urinating through your skin and you're parking acid in your connective and fatty tissues. That's the minimum, 7.2 pH. All you do is when you wake up in the morning, you take a strip of pH paper, you pee on it, and you look at the color. What color should it be? Green. Isn't this simple? It all comes back to green. If your pee is not green, if it's yellow, if, you're, you're, if your uh, eliminations are brown, it's the wrong color. It's supposed to be green. This is uh, really different, isn't it? <laughs> so what about the saliva pH? What does that mean? Well, that's kind of like your gas gauge. When you're looking at a car and the gas gauge is low, you, you go, oh, oh I've got to fill it up. Well, when you're testing your saliva, you're actually measuring the potentiality of alkalization. So if your pH is in the, uh, the saliva is lower, lower like when, before you eat something, because after you eat something, it should go up. Because the salivary glands do not secrete digestive enzymes. That's another medical myth. The salivary glands secrete baking soda, NaHCO3 sodium bicarbonate. And what happens when you eat something or put something in your mouth, 
The only thing you have to digest that food is your teeth, and if you swallow it without liquefying it, that's about the way it stays going through. That's why if you eat corn, it comes out corn. <laughs> because you forgot to chew it. It's the same thing with a piece of chicken. But see, for kids that are eating chicken, what happens, it sticks right into the small intestine, starts rotting those delicate appendages, which is the root system, and guess what they end up with? Diabetes. Chicken is the number one cause of type 1 diabetes. You eat it, plan on it. You see, we've been told that diabetes begins in the pancreas. You can't listen to your doctor because they've got to unlearn and relearn some basic things about physiology and anatomy and how things are actually really working. All the books have to be rewritten. So, you test your saliva before, should be 7.2 or greater. You test your saliva after you've eaten, five minutes after, what should it be? At least 8.4 or greater. Why? Because your saliva is an alkalizing material that raises the pH of whatever you're eating. Does not digest food. Food digests from the inside out. There is no mechanism in the human organism that digests food other than you chewing it. Don't expect the stomach to digest your food. And food does not digest in the small intestine. It's game over. So that's why America's constipated. If I was President of the United States, my first directive would be to put Congress on mandatory colonics. <laughs> As I said yesterday, you have more brain cells in your gut than you do in your head. If we had clearer bowels, we would have clearer minds, and we would have more inspired decisions coming from our politicians. We would purge the toxicity from the inside out, beginning with the bowels and then to the brain. I think there'd be more cooperation rather than competition if that was to happen. Anyway, sounds kind of fun. I don't know. I, I thought of that the other day and thought you might like it. Since, uh, you know, this is a very important year for our country. And you've already heard me say that we don't need more medication, we need more education. And we don't need health insurance. We need a program to empower people on how to take care of their bodies. And it has to begin with education. You gotta, you gotta, so the doctors go on strike, the hospitals go on strike, and people start eating better, they're going to start feeling better. And that's really what happens with depression, because depression is really not something you get, it's something you do, and it's a reflection of toxemia from within. So I gave last night a simple metaphor to explain this simply, this protocol that we call the pH miracle lifestyle. This is not a diet, this is a lifestyle. This is not something you do for one day or five days or ten days. This is something, if you're interested in feeling younger, anybody here interested in feeling younger? If you're interested in looking ten years younger, if you're interested in running, and not fainting or walking, you know, without gasping for air. If you're looking for a better quality and quantity of life, then this is a lifestyle that I would recommend that you look into seriously. As it relates to restoring health back to its natural state, it would be no different than changing the water for a fish who is sick. So when the fish is sick, what would you do? Would you treat the fish or change the water? And the common sense answer is change the water. Why? Because the fish is only as healthy as the water it swims in. Right now we're dealing with global warming. What is happening, the oceans are absorbing the acids of the atmosphere and it's being buffered by the coral or the calcium or the skeletal system of the ocean. It's called acid rain. 
the increase in epidemic proportions of cancer and diabetes where we have body warming, not global warming, but body warming, where we're dealing with the same acids, not from the macro world, but from what we eat, what we drink, and what we think, as acid is raining on our blood, on our bones, and on our muscles, and doctors are labeling this disease without understanding what is happening in the macro world is the very thing that's happening in the micro world. We're absorbing our own waste products called what I refer to as body warming. Acid rain from without, acid rain from within, and there are certain sections of the ocean now that used to contain over 5,000 species of marine life, they are all gone. Acid has killed them all. Acid is ripping your life away from you. One of the stronger acids that, uh, that uh, strips your bones and your muscles. Acid rain is soft drinks. They're not soft, they're hard drinks. They're har harder than alcohol. You're better off having a beer than drinking a Coke. You're better off having a shot of vodka than having a soda pop. The pH of soda pop is 2.5. Vodka is about 7, about 6.5. I don't recommend it. Okay, it has other effects, but it, it's a lot better than what our kids are drinking. And here's a scary thought. Orange juice is just about as toxic. Orange juice will actually shut down the immune system for five hours. The citric acid in orange juice is so paralyzing. The sugars in orange juice are so paralyzing. And this is where my lessons get really hard, because this is what the blood is teaching that I watch red blood cells, I watch white blood cells literally shake as if they're intoxicated when they're exposed to high sugar fruits. Pineapple, mangoes. Do I need to continue? All high sugar fruits paralyze your immunity, increase acidity, and are one of the major contributors of body warming. Now if it's if it's a choice, a banana, which is 25% acid, versus an avocado, which is like 3 to 5% acid, you know, there's no question. You can have all the avocados you want, but bananas will shut down your immunity, poison your blood, and start breaking down your tissues. And you say, well, what about all the potassium? Well, that potassium is gone. It gets nullified with all the sugar from the banana. So what you end up is a sugar hit. And we got banana holics in Australia promoting the banana diet, and I've seen their blood. These guys are athletes. They're running. The only thing that's saving their life is the fact that they're running and sweating all this acid out through the pores of the skin. Other than that, they'd probably be dead from ODing on banana. So I'll give you just a couple of extreme examples. Now, when I talk, these things seem extreme. But I believe that you're the kind of people that can listen to this, because I think there's people out here that need to hear this, and are those who are very, very interested in perfect health. But the first thing I do if you're a cancer patient or a diabetic is I immediately take you off high sugar fruits. No apples, no oranges, no bananas, no sweet fruit. So then we put you on the alkalizing fruits. What are they? Cucumber. Never thought I'd ever say that. I didn't like cucumber when I was growing up. It wasn't sweet enough. We were raised on orange juice. Cucumber, you have to change your taste buds. And many of us are slaves to our taste buds. We eat for taste. If I could make this carpet taste good, people would eat it. I could sell it. I could make a profit wouldn't digest any more than beef, chicken, or pork, or fish would digest. But hey, tastes good. And that's what happens with a lot of natural health foods. You've got to read the labels. Look at the carbohydrate loads. Look at the sugar contents of foods. Like a windshield donut uh, has about eight or, nine gram, eight, or nine, yeah, eight or nine grams per serving. You get more than that in orange juice or a banana. 
So you've got to watch the sugar. Sugar is an acid. It's a waste product. It poisons the blood. It deteriorates the alkaline design of the body. So if you're sick, you have to change the fluids of the body. It's not about treating the fish. It's about changing the fluids to a more alkaline state, and that's what we do when we're dealing with sickness and disease and restoring health and wellness to the body. We focus on the environment. One of the most important things that you do, can do is start drinking alkaline water. The wonderful thing about drinking alkaline water, it neutralizes or chelates or buffers the acids of the stomach, which is exactly what you want to do. Because the stomach doesn't digest food, remember? Only your teeth digest food. So by drinking alkaline water at a pH of 9.5, you're going to nullify and neutralize a poison that is so toxic that it has a pH of about 1 to 1.5. It is about 100 million times more acidifying than a glass of water that falls into the gastric pits of the stomach that never comes in contact with your food. It's sitting there after the food is left. You can neutralize that by drinking high pH water and the chemical compound which is destroying people's life is called hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is found in nutritional supplements. Hydrochloric acid is found in all pharmaceutical drugs. Because there's this false belief that we need to break down our food, but in reality, the stomach's main purpose is to alkalize the food. Did you realize just like the mouth, the pH goes up, so does the stomach. Because the goal for food to be transformed into the crypts of the small intestine into stem cells is one, it has to be liquid, two, the pH has to be at least 8.4, and three, ideally, the color of the food should be green. Now, if you want to eat healthy and you're working towards perfect health, that's the priorities. And this is why we put people who are sick, who don't have the energy to liquefy their food, you can get a blender to do that. You can get a juicer to do that. And as far as alkaline water, if you're not chemically altering the water, you can do that electrically too as well. And the challenge that we had at the PH Miracle Center is where do you get this stuff to be able to live this kind of lifestyle? And can you find it? And is it convenient? Where are the resources? So a lot of this, and I apologize for that, but I was literally forced to develop products to be able to resolve the problems that I was seeing that were not being addressed out there. And so I've been talking about ionized alkaline water now for over 30 years. In reality, I started this whole movement. And uh, I'm grateful that there are others who are embracing it now. But there is a controversy. Drinking alkaline water will neutralize the digestive enzymes. Great. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Your digestive enzymes are toxic acids. You would never, ever, if you're trying to achieve perfect health, fitness, spiritual connection, emotional balance, would you ever take digestive enzymes? Unless you want to poison yourself. Lipase, amylase, protease, they're waste products. They're the urine of fermentation and breakdown products. If you don't believe me, if you don't trust what I'm saying, get off your digestive uh, enzymes, start alkalizing, and watch your health improve. See, I'm so certain about my research is because of the hundreds of thousands of people in over 72 countries that have been resolved. When we were in Beijing, China, the head of the medical clinic and hospital there was not able to meet with us because he had ulcers, he had reflux, and they were trying to treat it with vinegar. And I said, look, you can't treat it with vinegar, you can't treat acid with acid. It's very, very simple. Start drinking, soda, uh, start drinking uh, soda water. Start drinking a little baking soda and water. Neutralizes the acids and the problem goes away. They were so impressed with that, that simple recommendation that I gave over 10 years ago, they wanted me to stay and work in the hospital there. 
I said, no, I'm going back to America and try to save, you know, as many people as I can from being educated beyond their intelligence. And you know the word intelligence means, inter means between, gents means lines. So I'm saying a lot of things, but you're going to have to read between the lines. Because you can be really smart and still stupid. Intelligent people are able to listen and read between the lines. Acids come from metabolism. Acids come from the foods and liquids we drink. Acids come from exercise, thinking, cellular transformation. I'm running out of time. And what is the gland responsible for all this alkalization to maintain the alkaline design? It is the stomach. The stomach is the main organ that produces sodium bicarbonate. For every molecule of sodium bicarbonate it produces, it pulls water. It pulls salt. That's why salt's so important. If you're not eating salt, you're not eating one of the foundational elements that builds alkaline buffers. Our bodies are starving for salt. And all we hear from doctors is to restrict our salt. Is this some sort of conspiracy? Maybe, maybe not. I, all I know is they don't understand the biochemistry. Hydrochloric acid cannot be created in isolation. Hydrochloric acid can only be produced in equal amounts of sodium bicarbonate being produced. The formula is simple. NaCl plus H2O plus CO2 equals NaHCO3 plus HCl. You cannot produce hydrochloric acid unless you're drinking it or taking it in a supplement form. And God forbid you are taking it. And if you are, I hope you'll consider stopping it immediately. The stomach produces sodium bicarbonate to alkalize the acids from your thoughts, to alkalize the acids that produce from exercise, from the movements of your body, from your heartbeat, from the contraction of every muscle. The stomach produces the sodium bicarbonate. When you're worried about something, when you're upset about something, how does that feel in your stomach? Have you ever had an acidic stomach or an upset stomach after you've been worried or you overate the wrong things? That's the body's need for more salt. It's the body's need for more bicarbonate. And when you have nausea, that is the symptom of a deficiency in sodium bicarbonate. Now this is not explained in any medical text. You cannot research this anywhere. The only place you can find it is my work, my writings. And in the chapters in the new PH Miracle book, revised and updated. I hope you have a copy. We only brought a few. There you learn the true physiology and biochemistry of the alimentary canal, which is not a digestive system. It's an alkaline buffering system. And it does not break down any foods, but prepares the food for biological transformation in the small intestine. People think that nutrients are absorbed in the small intestine. That is also another medical myth. There are no nutrients absorbed in the small intestine. The food, which is called chyme, which is liquid, at a pH at 8.5, is converted into embryonic cells, stem cells, which then give birth to red blood cells. The primary site of red blood cell production is not in the marrow of the bones. It is in the small intestine. For God himself has actually declared this in the Old Testament. Health in the navel, marrow to the bones. Not marrow to the bones when we have... It's not the reverse. You get marrow in the bones when you have a healthy core. You build blood in the core. The only time you build blood out of your own bones is when you're in starvation. And all the studies that were done in Germany were done on the starvation of pigeons and rabbits and on biopsy found that their bodies were deteriorating from the bone exactly. That's exactly what happens when people, when we're in reverse transformation in a state of a systemic acidosis, when the small intestine has been compromised to a point where you can no longer convert food into blood or you've been marginalized, bone is then transformed, liver is transformed, heart is transformed, brain is transformed, muscle is transformed into making new blood. Because blood is 
the primary organ of life, and when that organ can no longer survive the overacidification, it dies, and then you separate from spirit, from this clay tabernacle. There are seven stages. The first stage is enervation, then it goes to sensitivities, which includes allergies, mucus buildup, inflammation. You can't say inflammation with acidity. If, if you have sores and aches and pains, you can't have those without localized acidity. It's impossible. Where's that acid coming from? It's coming from your own lifestyle and dietary choice. It goes into induration. Acids, just like tanning leather, causes tissue to go into induration, contracts. That's why we stretch every day to, to elongate the muscles and just like a sponge, squeeze that acid out. Ulcerations are nothing more than acids working on breaking down tissue to degeneration. We've got a critical situation where body mass is being broken down to a point to where the organs can no longer function. Multiple sclerosis is nothing more than acid destroying the myelin sheath and destroying the nerves, disrupting the electrical system. The body goes into self-preservation mode. This is Danny Vieira, director of Modern Mana and Bella Vita Lifestyle Center. I am happy to announce the launch of RISEN, our new school of natural healing and health evangelism. RISEN, an acronym for Remedial and Integrated School of Evangelism and Naturopathy, offers training to become a certified natural hygiene coach. Learn how you can operate your own lifestyle education home or successfully guide yourself and others to proactive and independent long-lasting health. For more information, go to www.modernmana.org.